All right, it's finally time to start learning a little bit about programming with Scratch. So if you haven't done so already, uh, I encourage you to open up Scratch, go ahead and log in to the account that you created, uh, go ahead and create a new blank project, right? So if you go to Scratch and, and say create a new one, right, we come back to this screen here and uh, I'm actually going to give because I now have an account and it's going to be saved. I'm going to be I'm going to give it a name up here at the top. So I'm going to call it uh, Play with Movement. Okay, and so this is the title of this program, and that'll get saved. And now what I want to do is just sort of see how all of this works. And so the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is just drag out the very top block from the motion menu this move ten steps. Right, so we can drag that out. We can drop it here in the script area, the program area. I can move this around if I need to. And the very simplest thing that I can do is I can click on this block. And if I do that, if you're watching the cat over here when I click on that block, you'll notice that when I just click on it once, that the cat moves a few steps to the right. And in fact, it moves 10 pixels to the right. Right? And I can change this so I can say that's not far enough. I want him to move 50 steps. Right? So if I click on that again, now he's moving much farther in that direction. And as you saw earlier uh, in, in the introductory videos uh, when we talked about Scratch, we saw that you, you know I can put a negative number there. He moves backwards when I put negative steps. And so the, the basic idea here is if I want to create some movement, I could say, well, let's have the cat move 10 steps. Um, and then let's have the cat turn some number of degrees, maybe turn 45 degrees. Right? Oh, let's move more than 10 steps. Let's move 100 steps so that we can see that it happens. And then turn 45 degrees. And so right now he's pointing to the right. Right, And so when I click on this, these two blocks that I've joined together, and so notice here that when I brought the block over, when I got close enough, we get that gray shadow there that says, if you release this now, these are going to join together like two Legos, and I have this little two action program. And what it says is, first, move 100 steps, then turn 45 degrees clockwise, right? And so if I do that, you can see that the scratch, scratchy cat moved forward, and turned 45 degrees and I can actually keep doing that and he went off the screen there for a little bit but he but he goes around and completely comes back and I can just keep clicking that and if I want to do more I could you know add even more to this kind of thing right and that's the, the it's as simple as that is that's the fundamentals of programming in scratch this idea of moving blocks together and connecting them up in whatever order makes sense for what you're trying to do and then telling the cat to to execute them. Now, I actually don't think that this is the way I would quite do it yet though, right? I want to build on this metaphor of you are the director of a play, of a movie, and you are telling the cat to do something. And so, you know, when I'm I actually used to be a middle school teacher, and I actually taught the school play every year, directed the school play. And I, so I know from firsthand experience that as the director of a play, I tell my actors, places everybody and action, right? And so I, I give this sort of global command to everybody, and we want to be able to do that in Scratch. And so first of all, this idea of saying you know, places everybody in action comes from the events menu. So I'm going to come over here to the left hand side and I'm going to click on the events sub menu. Again, remember the other way you could have gotten there was simply to scroll down in the list of all the options. So if you can't remember what menu it's in, just scroll until you look for it. And you'll find this block right here that says when the green flag is clicked, and I can connect that to the top of my program. Notice a couple things about this program. First of all, notice it has a very different shape than the blue blocks that I've been using so far, right? The blue blocks all have this shape that says, you know, there's, there's a notch for things to be connected above it and a tab to connect to things below it. And so when I, when I click these things together, they all join up into this sort of Lego brick stack of commands. You'll notice that this, when green flagged, doesn't have a notch in the top. That's because nothing can come before this. This is the start of a program that says when the green flagged is clicked, 
I want you to do these four commands. And now the way I, you know, I tell my cat places everybody an action is that I click on this green flag, right? And that says, this says when that green flag icon is clicked, do these things one right after the other. When I only have one actor on the stage, which is all we're going to work with in this particular unit, that green flag doesn't seem quite as big a deal. But, but looking forward a little bit, imagine that I have two or three actors, two or three sprites on my stage that I'm giving directions to. I want to be able to tell all of them to start simultaneously rather than having to come in and click on these blocks of code one at a time. And so what happens is that I can just click the green flag and now all of my actors will be listening for this message, for this event, you see that vocabulary word here, this idea of the event, that when the green flag green flag event happens, I want to do these three things. Move forward 100 steps, turn 45 degrees, go to some spot on the screen, glide, and it's, it's a pretty silly little program actually at the moment, and, and it doesn't actually work the way we might think it does, but, but there we can go. Now, you'll notice that, let me pull these off for a little bit, because I actually want the the, the cat to move around for a little bit. You'll notice that when I do this, right, that each time the cat starts, he starts from wherever he left off. This is exactly like when I was the theater director, right? If I said to my my students, to my actors, okay, start the scene, right? I don't just say start the scene. The first thing I say is places everybody. So in fact, what I might want to do in all of this is to start by having the cat go to a certain spot on the screen, right? Maybe he goes to negative 30, 25, and then he moves. And this way now, by changing it, we can always see that he goes to his place. Okay. Now, some of that doesn't make much sense until you play with it yourself. So I'm going to stop this lesson video now. The next uh, section of this unit will actually give you one of those ungraded homework assignments. The next section of this will, will ask you to perform a couple of actions, something I'm not collecting that you're not going to turn in, but I strongly encourage you to do so that you can better understand the material that's coming after this.